welcome everybody to the Disney Discord podcast. We are live on August the 7th, um, where we are. the Walt Disney Company have just heralded their quarter three financial earnings call, which I was at work for, so I have no idea what they said, but Bernardo was there for the whole thing. So, Bernardo, what happened? Yeah, I was. So, strangely enough, they didn't start off the, the call with... You know, what they normally do was with a small summary of everything, they just went straight to the questions, which was a bit strange for me because they normally do the other, the other way. But either way, we have the report on hand and there's some very interesting things to talk about. Um, I mean, just from the, from the cinema perspective, Inside Out has made 1.5 billion US dollars in the box office. That's wow. amazing. It's now it's now the biggest animated movie behind The Lion King, uh, the 2019 remake. So that's huge, and that was a big driver in the, um, you know, in operating income. So mm-hmm. there's that. Uh, the parks, the parks, uh, especially the domestic parks, have suffered quite a bit with um, lower attendance. And they are projecting that we'll only get worse as uh, the days pass. So could we be seeing the real effects of the post-COVID, you know, boom, tourist, tourism boom, and the effects of, you know, the, um, the new systems that Disney has put in place, like Genie Plus and uh, stuff like that? Yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a lot of people who... The spontaneity of the magic and getting away to Disney from, you know, a different type of uh, vacation has certainly changed. And I think, you know, we have, we've seen it predominantly. We've been uh, front seat guests of this in Paris where the Olympics have come to town and DLP yep. is currently very empty. But it's probably the least amount of perks you, you've ever seen, especially if you're an annual pass holder. And the least... Uh, or sorry, rather the highest pricing and the least mm-hmm. offering for that pricing through the annual passes. They scrapped the entire annual pass system they'd had for about 10, 15 years before that for a whole new system and a new benefits table for the Olympics. And you can tell that it was after the Olympics because they designed the passes as like gold, bronze and silver. Yeah, Specifically exactly. on an Olympic theme, and it's completely backfired. The parks are empty, there's nobody there, there's lots of deals, there's lots of try to drive people in, and we're saying that now they're having to say at the earnings call that it's got lower than expected attendance. Well, that was actually very funny, because the only time Disneyland Paris itself got mentioned uh, was uh, they, they were saying Disneyland Paris has felt some challenges because of the Olympics, but they also said that that's not a surprise, and fortunately the Olympics will be over soon. So if that's not a surprise, why didn't you do anything about it, you know, with special deals, marketing, you know, targeted at those customers or those possible guests that are coming to Paris for the Olympics? So that was actually um, a bit funny. They, they said they were expecting this big de- decrease when they obviously were not, <laughs> you know. So... It raises it raises the it raises the question: Had they done nothing, would they in fact not be in a better place just now? If they'd done absolutely nothing, they'd probably have done better. Yeah, I, I think what... they would. <laughs> I definitely like think that. they would. So I don't I don't believe them when they say they expected this. They expect oh, yeah, what they I think. Not. What I think they expected, um, given that they stopped the Sequoia getting refur- refurbished and everything was that mm-hmm. they could maintain top-tier pricing. Bearing in mind, it was top-tier pricing that was showing before we kind of got closer to the event. Absolute yep. top-tier pricing, top-tier ticket packages, and top-tier annual pass pricing with the least amount of benefits and freebies. Mm-hmm. So they definitely thought they were going to get away with it. They definitely did. And uh, I think that's the problem we are seeing especially in DLP and in the domestic parks, is that we've seen Disney raise prices like never before these past uh, four years since the, co- since the COVID pandemic. And uh, I think that's um, catching up to, you know, to the attendance. And um, I don't know if they're... I don't think they'll de- decrease the prices. I think that we're going to see a lot more discounts. 
uh, perhaps Daniel well, Pass hoping. lineup could change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it, but I think, as Bastion said, the um, it helped. It didn't help that a lot of people are staying away from Paris during the summer. Um, I, I remember seeing a an article about Delta that said they were going to lose around a hundred million dollars in losses uh, because of the the lack of bookings for, from mm. the the US to uh, Paris. So there's definitely a lot at play here. I think attendance will definitely rise after the Olympics end in September. Um, so yeah, I I I do think we're seeing the worst of it right now in Paris. Um, but it's almost uh, as a warning, you know, to what yeah. can possibly come if they don't, uh, you know, go back uh, and think or rethink their strategy. Yeah, I, de I definitely think they've misplayed this one. But was there anything else interesting before we move on to D23, which is the next big event that happens on the... Is it the 11th? D23 is this Sunday, I believe? Um, uh, it is on Sunday... 3 a.m. for us, 4 a.m. for French uh, people. So is that and, uh, is that Sunday into Belgians. Monday or is that Saturday into no, Sunday? No, that's that's Saturday to to Sunday. Perfect. So what else was said on the earnings call before we dip off? Normally we have so, there's something else. Yeah, the first time Disney Plus says turn the profits dead last quarter. So Bob Iger said they were going to turn a profit uh, until. Uh, was it uh, the 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 end of the year? So mm -hmm. they did that. Disney Plus was profitable. I mean, there wasn't a lot of content being made, but uh, yeah, they they said the a lot of people came to watch the Deadpool movies and Inside Out. Those three movies saw a lot of increasing viewership. Uh, so we are seeing, you know how theater and the streaming service can coexist in a, in a way. And I think that's what Disney really wants to push as they, you know, they want to make money from both sides, obviously. So yeah. that's good to see they have been able to make that work. Um, and yeah, I think that's mostly it. They also yeah. made a small tease for D23 and uh, t saying that it'll, t it'll, it'll take place from August 9th to 11th, and will showcase a lot of more upcoming attractions and experiences. So that's regarding the um, the parks and resorts panel, or Disney, what was it, what is the name? Experiences? Disney Experiences, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so, so they've got, there's that. They've, they've got a little bit like that, and I'm only reading, um, I mean, I was not there, so I'm only... Um reading online but we've got three star wars films now confirmed um yes. which says it includes the mandalorian and grogu so they're quite specifically mm -hmm. calling that out that, that we're going into the mandoverse we're not going to try another <laughs> um sequel or prequel yeah, yeah. um yeah. they call out toy story 5 because it is the horse that keeps on giving they've got the avengers doomsday and the secret wars coming in 2026 and 27 respectively We've got mm -hmm. the Avatar sequels coming in 25, 29, and 31, and they're opening an Avatar experience at Disneyland Resort. They've num they've called out that, but they announced that previously. The other big news that they've they've announced is um, on on their thing, and th this this is kind of big, but it's very small in their presentation. ESPN is going to launch on Disney Plus in December of this year. So yeah, mm -hmm. now that that's interesting because. ESPN is not huge in the UK, and I don't think it's huge in Europe, but they have the potential to really take on... They definitely do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not a sport person at all, so it interests me not in the slightest, but I'd mm -hmm. imagine they'll package it in some way that I'll end up having to buy it. So, yeah. you know, they, definitely. They'll, they'll end, they're definitely not going to do anything like and that. There, um, there, there's, I don't think they mentioned that or... I think they did. I'm not sure, but um, they Disney Plus is also getting the a new system, which will be the channels. So mm -hmm. we're gonna have live channels showcasing different types of content on the Disney Plus app. So in a way, they're bringing back the you know how we used to watch TV. So yeah. there, I think there's going to be a, a channel for The Simpsons where you click on it and just a random episode starts playing. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be the same episode for everyone, so like a real TV channel. Yeah, it might, it might be quite it random. Will. 
Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's going to be a Star Wars channel, and I think that this has a lot of potential, because a lot of times I personally don't want to choose an episode to watch. I just want to watch something, you know? Yeah. And just clicking on it, just clicking on, 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 a, on a button and just a random episode of something pops up, that's, I think that has a lot of potential. It is very interesting that um, it's very interesting that they're going to do that because I think one of the big problems they have is there's a huge YouTube audience who just yeah. watch whatever's the next video. Exactly. And I think Disney, Disney would love to have all the people who are watching just random YouTube videos to come and instead spend time on the Disney Plus platform. Mm-hmm. So I think that I, has I, a lot of potential. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's launching um, this September. So uh, don't quote me on that. I remember seeing it somewhere, but um, yeah, we'll see. Well, there we go. We've got our first request to speak ever on a podcast. WDW Central, are you there? You can come and join us on the stage and join our discussion if you wish. I've invited you, but I don't know how it works. There you go. Welcome to the stage. Hello. Nice. <laughs> Welcome to the stage. Your your first ever audio guest that's ever come on the stage with us. Okay, let's Welcome. turn on the microphone. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you fine. What what did you make of the the finan- the financial um, review that Disney put out today? Well, first off, no financial advice provided on this Discord server because I don't want to get sued. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> it's hard to interpret. Right? Mm. I feel yeah. what's worrisome is the results in the parks because we saw that they put all this corporate phrasing that I need to sh- search again because I don't remember what was the specific, but they said something along the lines that people are not coming anymore to the parks, which could be worrisome. Yeah. Provided with Epic Universe coming next year, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So there's they have significant headwinds in front of them, but that that's usually good for them because Disney's best times I think have always been when there's been a competitor on the horizon or someone who's been pressing them to do better and cheaper and faster and you know I, I think we get a lot out of when Disney are actually under fire rather than <laughs> sauntering around like they were doing for several years there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think if that happens with Epic Universe, which I think will happen with Epic Universe, I think that's a bit of a teaser of what can possibly happen with DLP too, with Universal possibly on the horizon for uh, for the UK. Yeah, I think there's a bit there. Now, that brings that brings us on to the, the main meat of tonight's show, which yep. is D23 is on Sunday. Um, this is the the presentation for fans. It is supposed to be the bit that everybody warms up at. It's the bit that Bernardo pays an awful lot of money to be a gold member as he <laughs> surreptitiously <laughs> dropped into the podcast there. People do pay a lot of money to be D23 members, and that's supposed to be the first look at the new news and the new information that's come out from Disney. Yeah, and um, also got very expensive boxes. Yes, very expensive yes, very boxes. Very expensive boxes. Yeah, I, I've got a, a little, a little statue, a little Mickey statue. So that's exciting. <laughs> We've got that. So let's go through. So mine are absolutely ridiculous because I make them up as I go along. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through my DLP D twenty three predictions first, if I can. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go because ahead. I think. I think this is this is probably where it is, and then I can probably go a bit wider, but I don't pay much attention to California because I don't go there very often. Mm-hmm. I've, be, I've been once or twice, and I've never been to Tokyo or Hong Kong, so I apologise in advance that we have no, I have nothing on that. Um, <laughs> I think DW, I think WDW, the, the, the only thing that would excite me there, to be totally honest, would be them building a whole new park. I think that would be kind of cool. So for DLP, though, yeah, I think that... Um, Frozen will be much to everyone's dismay, but I think Frozen will be the main show for D23 for Paris. And I think that's because it hasn't opened yet. So you can still kind of milk it while it hasn't opened. And I think that there's probably going to be some sort of gimmick that Hong Kong doesn't have to sort of differentiate them. Because they don't like going on stage and saying, no, we built the exact same thing here and here. They like going on stage and saying, this is new or this is new. 
there'll yeah. be some sort of the buzzwords just now are AI and automation and robots and things. So I think that the, the for Frozen, we're certainly going to hear something about an AI or a robot or some sort of trick they've got for Frozen Land in Disneyland Paris. And I think there's going to be a heavy amount on Frozen Land in Disneyland Paris, some unique twists. Um, mm. Maybe not in the building facades, but you can do you can do like little shows. You can have characters interacting. You can have robots out and about. I don't I don't quite know what I'm expecting, but I would expect something of that type. Um, yeah, be careful so, what you wish for. Yeah, I'm not. I, I mean, I, I if they cancelled Frozen, it wouldn't bother me. But um, <laughs> it genuinely would not bother me. It does not excite me in the slightest. Um, However, I'm having, I mean, it's worth, it's worth reiterating, I'm having a baby girl later on in this year, so when she's born, she might be in a Frozen, so you never know. I'm t- maybe maybe it will be my favourite land in the future. Um, yeah, I you do never believe, know. Exactly. I believe there will be a new parade, and this would be a good time to announce it. Dar- Disney Stars on Parade is genuinely falling apart as it rolls down Main Street. And mm-hmm. I think that there has to be some sort of parade in the works. It's a great time to show off parade. People, Parks fans love parades. Um, I don't know that you'll get to see the whole parade, but you, they, they must have something, or at least a theme or something they could show. Um, Disney's Adventure Park or Adventure World or whatever we're calling Walt Disney Studios in the future <laughs> is going to have is going to have to have a show. Um, now I would. I honestly would place money on the podcast tonight that that show is going to be some version of Fantasmic with drones. Um, okay. Disneyland Paris have never done a show. Every show now that Disneyland Paris do that's new has a drone. So there'll be a drone in the show without fail. There's going to be drones in the show. They're not building... They're building a drone control hut. They're definitely going to have drones in the show. Yeah. Um, I. Fantasmic is the number one I think they would do. Maybe not, although there's a little bit of now doubts. Would they do it year one or would they wait and that's a big thing for year two? Who knows? But there's going to be a lake show. Somebody's going to have to do something with the lake, otherwise it's just a big dead bit of water. Um, Indiana Jones, the 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 temple ride, I think that's probably going to have to get replaced with something because I've seen some pictures and it looks pretty horrendous. Um, would, and that, will co- would that be announced... This D23, or are you just talking about what's to come in the future? No, I think they would announce. I mean, if they've, they've got, I mean, it's not particularly a huge roller coaster or anything, it's not a huge project. I would announce it. They've got, if they're talking Indiana Jones as being one of the attractions that are going into Disney's Animal Kingdom, Disney likes saving money however they can, and I just think that it would be a good time to announce a Disneyland Paris Indiana Jones attraction. Mm. Um, the Disney Village, I think we, we we still haven't seen a full set of artwork, so no, I think the the right we're... the right side is complete mystery to us. Uh, we have no idea uh, what's it gonna look like. So yeah, and I mean, yeah, if you yeah. take if you take Planet Hollywood and you take <laughs> Hurricanes, which is the upstairs of um the the upstairs at the far end. They effectively, those are big empty spaces, so they've got hundreds of room to do something. The building already exists, so that's not going to go unaddressed. They do have space. They do have space, but the question is, can they use that space? Is it accessible today? They would have to change a bit, from my experience, at least. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, that's what they do. I mean, they build... Look at the security booths. They built. We've had about twelve solutions there, so they'll spend money yeah. in the same spaces over and over again. They surely have to do something. We can't have two huge empty spaces. I think that's probably coming. We've not had full artwork. It feels like the sort of thing that wouldn't be big news by itself, but would probably be quite big news if it was released at something like D twenty three. And yeah. I presume the the artwork must exist. There's no way they haven't drawn the artwork for the whole place. So mm-hmm. that they probably makes have sense. done the artwork in AutoCAD, but they probably didn't put those nice Photoshop filters yeah. like they mm-hmm. did for the Disney Destiny. <laughs> We've got yeah. in the comments Bastion saying Indiana Jones is to get is to get renamed the Bone Breaker. Yeah, it definitely is the Head Shaker or the Bone Breaker. <laughs> that is a definite good name for it. Um, I think DLP is going to, it's always, the premium rooms, you can tell this, because if you go on the DLP site, 
you currently yeah. cannot book a premium suite. Now you previously could, so you could you could change to the Golden Forest Club, you could change to the Castle Club, you could change to whatever the club was, the Compass Club, I think it was called, at uh, the Newport, and there's the other one at the Hotel New York. What is the name of the club in New York? The Empire State Club. Is it still called that? Yeah, I think it was. I think I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got you've got the clubs. You you basically cannot book those rooms on the website anymore. It's an impossibility. You have to phone up, yeah, and that just I've tells never you that understood, they... I've never understood why they did that. It just makes no well, sense. I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Paris being Disneyland Paris. I'll tell. I'll tell yeah. you why. They they used to allow you to, but the reason they've stopped it is because effectively they're always sold out. So rather than lose your custom, they would rather be like, oh, this date, this date has been, you know, there's a date available in three weeks instead of four weeks, or there's a date available in. You know, six mm. months instead of yeah, five yeah, months. Yeah, so yeah. they always want you on the phone because they don't want to lose that that premium level of service. And okay, you know, yeah, yeah. So they basically refurbed the whole Disneyland hotel to be premium the whole thing. And we've seen that with the sort of curfews on restaurants and bars to try and keep it premium. But the whole mm-hmm. the whole hotel is basically premium. I think they might announce another hotel at Disneyland Paris, a premium, another premium hotel on the lake. I because think they definitely should. Yeah. Mm. There's, especially, there's there's especially lot. especially looking at the at the new hotels in Shanghai Disneyland. The new hotel they're building mm. there, it looks perfect for, you know, another lakeside hotel here in Paris. And it's just this it art nouveau theme with um I mean, it just looks gorgeous and I think it would work so nicely in Paris. Um, but does DLP need another premium hotel, or should yes. should they focus on the most, the more uh, lower end uh, resorts? Well, the, your your problem comes in that the premium hotel makes the most money, and they want to make a lot of money. So they're currently out of inventory more times than they're in inventory. So they've yeah, only yeah, got. Yeah. Keep in mind, the fourth lakeside hotel space will be the smallest. It is. It is the smallest of the. So, of the yeah. So is the fourth hotel round the lake is going to have to be heavily premium because it is going to be a very expensive hotel, or rather there's going to be. A... Go for it. So, but but yeah, uh, Bastian is is asking where around the lake. So it would be between the new Port Bay Club and Disney Village. So there's a, a where the events arena is currently located. That's the location for the fourth lake hotel. And I mean, pre- you would also need to keep in mind that uh, you're going to expand Disney Village there. You're going to have a hotel that's going to have access to Disney Village quite easy, comparable yes. to Disney Grand California yeah, yeah. in California. But what yeah, that's true. intrigues me will be the theme of this hotel, because all hotels near the lake, they have an American theme, all designed by mm-hmm. postmodern architects. And that plot was reserved for Robert Venturi's Las Vegas Hotel, which would have been the culmination of his work because he wrote a book called Learning for Las Vegas, which kick-started this movement in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Las, the Las Vegas Hotel was never built. It was quite a, an awful-looking hotel, too, but that's just... You, you did a video, you, didn't you? You did a video on it, didn't you? Not I, I didn't. It was not too ugly. Did okay. you know? Give it a... <laughs> I, I know. Oh, no, I did I not. You did. But but yeah, so they they are building supposedly a, a Disney Village expansion around that location that'll connect to the to the roundabout on the other side. So the hotel will need to have some sort of you know connection to Disney Village, and that's why I think they should opt for a boardwalk style hotel like the one in Orlando I think that could work very nicely um, like as a as a tra- transition from the hotel area into Disney Village I think that that would look very nice uh but that again it's just just an idea I I the only reason I put us. that on there I've, the only reason I've put that on there is I think they they have very low um premium room availability all the time and I can't imagine Disneyland Paris want to have very low premium room availability. Mm-hmm. They also, it's worth noting, the previous high part, the, the previous high times off Disneyland Paris, which was 2012, 
they announced that they were looking at another five star hotel to sit on the to overlook Walt Disney Studios or be integrated with Walt Disney Studios in some way. So yeah. I I think you know that would have been great. Well Ben Genation's put in there that the Hollywoodian theme would have fit in perfectly and I think that potentially we might see some sort of movement on that for, you know, the expansion of Disney's Adventure World, especially when we take into the the theatre district. However, I'm not entirely sure the space that was allocated for that, I'm not entirely sure it's still there. Like, I don't quite I don't get where they... I think it is. No, they, they, I, I, think, I think I've seen an image of what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. And um, it would be, so, in the back of the existing Walt Disney Studios, right? So, connected to the to the main avenue, or, or not the main avenue, but closer to um, Val de Rock. So, South, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't think that is um, that location yeah. still exists, because they've built the, the new houses there, the new buildings, and also the expansion. I don't think that's, that's yeah, available. Not, definitely yeah. not. It looks... It looks um, Benjamin helpfully says there have been lots of maps of Disneyland Paris with the location for future hotels, and I think that's probably the only thing they've said publicly was I think the 2012 statement, which was that they were looking at another five five star experience. I, I could be wrong on that. Someone could probably um, correct me if I'm wrong, but 2012 they definitely said in one of their finance calls that was back under the Euro Disney company when it was just Euro Disney. They said they wanted to explore another five star hotel and it was going to be linked to the the Walt Disney Studios. People liked the park based hotel. Um, mm-hmm. Then I think we've seen some development uh the Disney Village and I think the Lakeside um, hotel probably made more sense at that point because it fits in with the rest of the hotels and secondly it um, it, it could be sold for a higher premium. It's very close to Disney Village. It's very close to the theme parks. Yeah, exactly. If it was high enough up, if it was quite a high tower, you could actually probably see... I'm just wondering, you could probably see into the Walt Disney Studios, or at least you'd be able to see, you know, Tower of Terror. Yeah, you yes, probably, but you probably is that could, a good yeah. view, though? Seeing all the well, um, AstroTurf and the press <laughs> theme park land? <laughs> well, you could I definitely get that, so... <laughs> In a couple so of got, years, it'll be better. <laughs> I, I, I can't see why they wouldn't go for the hotel, only because they currently are struggling to have enough inventory for premium rooms. So having more premium rooms makes more sense. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. the, other, the other thing that I think might be added, I think Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is a very easy one. To, it is very popular in the parks that it's in. It's secondly, it's a ridiculously cheap attraction. It is one of the cheapest attractions that Disney can add to a park with almost zero effort. Um, everybody mm-hmm. loves it. It fits in almost any space, and it can but be. How? How do you mean how? I mean, they they could yeah, definitely how? add it to to Walt Disney Studios, especially if you if you take down the the building, the Disney uh, Channel building. Yeah. So to the left, uh, when you enter Walt Disney Studios, that area is quite big, and you still have a. Uh, a big-ish expansion plot behind that, so I could definitely see them, um, you know, use that space for an attraction. Or they'll, or they'll, or they'll throw it, it at in studios. DLP. It makes sense, but DLP it's kind of a weird fit, right? What's the facade going to be? That doesn't really and matter. Also, the, the perimeter of the building, according to the Disneyland version, I'm looking here at Google Earth, is about. 400 meters and hmm. it's an area of 8,000 meters yeah it would fit in Disneyland Park though yeah it, it, especially if you put it behind the Fantasyland um, yeah it's just like Benji Nation said behind the Fantasyland uh, station um, yeah. that could work very well oh. very nicely there it would definitely fit that- it Ridiculously cheap. They're looking for capacity. They're looking for new things. Um, I think it's such an easy one to add on. And then finally, just to really upset everyone, yeah, just because I know this is my most controversial yeah. thought, <laughs> and I'm never short of them, but I think they might look at renaming Disneyland Park. Oh. You think so? Well, I think they should rename the the resort, not the park. I think the park <laughs> should remain as Disneyland Park. I uh, I you can wonder have Disney Adventure World. 
you know. Ooh, I have whatever. an idea. How about uh, Euro Disneyland? That sounds original, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> Euro Disneyland would be it. quite amazing. <laughs> the, the only reason I say that, right, here, here's why. Hear me out on this. They've tried so hard recently to build the Disneyland and the Walt Disney World brands. So they've been trying to really, they really, really went on on, this is Disneyland, this is Walt Disney mm -hmm. World, and I don't know, they don't want Disneyland to be a very special place that Walt designed and everything else to be named something slightly different. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, I don't know, they've been, they've been slowly, if you look at the adverts, especially in the UK, the Magic Kingdom has been getting deprioritized so much into just being mm. Disney World. And that that's partially because a lot of people go to Disney and then just go to the Magic Kingdom. But mm -hmm. they they've definitely been trying to downplay that and then have like distinctive this is Disneyland, this is Walt Disney World. And I'm getting the feeling, especially with Disney's Adventure World, that they're trying <laughs> very hard to shift the perception of Disneyland Paris, and so that. So what? What would you rename the park to? So oh, I would have any I'm idea? terrible. At, I'm terrible at names. <laughs> okay. Well, let's ask ChatGPT. Yeah. Okay, I mean, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You ask ChatGPT while we we bash on. But yeah, yeah I, I, I we've changed the name so often in Disneyland, and Benji Nation again saying we're changing, you know, changing it another time. But the truth is, it's been changed that many times. I still don't think we're at the final incarnation of what the park's going to be called. Oh yeah, we're we're definitely. I know not. how about Hyperia XL theme park. Yeah, that's the sort of the thing they would yeah, come that's... up with. They're... <laughs> Yeah, Paris yeah, so Magical I, World. Paris Magical World. You know that checks checks some of the boxes with magical and Paris. So in world, you know, I think that's something that Disney would probably go for. Honestly, with uh, listen, universe, universal, Universal Great Britain have the greatest problem because you're either gonna have to call it Universal GB because there's no way you're gonna call it Universal Kent, like. Kent is not <laughs> up there with the Orlandos or the Anaheims of the world or the Las Vegas. Or the Paris's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Kent. Welcome to... It's not even in Welcome Kent. It's, Kent. It's, it's outside Bedford. Kent. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Welcome, Bedford. Welcome to Universal Mid-Bedfordshire, just above Kent and, you know, <laughs> east of the M6. Yeah. Like, that's not going to be now... how we're going to... And now we're away from London. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's not gonna happen. Um, so Benji so... Nation, uh, I would go with Disney Hollywood Adventure. I love that. That was the name I proposed, or a lot of people proposed that before they came up with um, you know the thing they are going to call it. Um, and uh, it's the first thing that people see from the outside, and would create a storyline around Hollywood stories come to life. I think that would work perfectly. Um, now, when it comes to the Disneyland Park, I honestly cannot see them changing that name. I do think they should start renaming the resort. So, maybe perhaps go simple with it. Maybe something like Tokyo or Shanghai. Or, uh, um, so, Tokyo is called Tokyo Disney Resort or Shanghai Disney Resort. I think it should be called Paris Disney Resort. So, as simple as that, you know. To kind of separate the resort from Disneyland Park. Uh, yes. I think having Disneyland Paris with a Disneyland Park, with a Disneyland Hotel, I think it's just too much. Yeah, it uh, makes but, no yeah. sense. Yeah, exactly. No, this made sense. Anyway, that is the the end of my very controversial um, <laughs> presentation of what I expect for D23. So, I'm very interested. Very controversial if, indeed. Well, all my contributions are always controversial, I learn. <laughs> um, but some of the, I mean, oddly, some of them come true. When Fantasmic is delivered in uh, Disney's Adventure World, you're all going to be like, how did he know that years ago? <laughs> um, and yeah. shout out to Ali, who has obviously done an awful lot of work with outside ears and Disney are now yeah. like, clamping down on that. To be, to be clear, the first indication that I'm wrong in Fantasmic is nobody's served me a cease and desist yet. Exactly, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, nobody, nobody's told me to stop talking about Fantasmic and uh, what is the Walt Disney <laughs> Studios part just now so okay right I've, I've come up with mine 
What 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 mm-hmm. else? You you guys must have some thoughts on. So what yes, it's coming D twenty three. I think the the a, a large focus this time should be on you know Walt Disney Studios with not only the expansion but the renaming of the park because there haven't been a lot of Disney parks that get a full on rebrand you know um, so I think there's they will try to focus a bit on that especially because there's not a lot coming to the other Disney resorts around the world currently. So that's the 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 one big project is that. So I think we'll see a new overview of the park, of Disney Adventure World, perhaps with a new logo. I honestly believe and hope that the, the, the logo they showcased in April is just a placeholder because that looks awful for a theme park. Um, Ouch. And I think... <laughs> was it you that that made the logo? Me? No. Uh, no, mm-hmm. WW Central. No. Oh, okay. It could have been. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I exactly. Just... Yeah, but um so I think we'll see the first information regarding the second attraction coming to to Adventure Way, which we've seen Ali kind of tease a bit um so it should have uh the theme um from up so the movie up uh now don't ask me why it's outside of disney of the the (laughs) pixar worlds of pixar it just you know it's just disneyland paris doing disney yeah we're never we've we've had to give up on the idea that everything will make sense so move on from that It's, it's, it's definitely not uh and then you know we have the lion king a lot of people don't think the lion king is coming i myself have some doubts um, but I'm hopeful. I'm 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 staying hopeful that we will learn about the second land coming to to Walt Disney Studios. Uh, so when you exactly. when you say there are doubts, do you are you saying there are doubts on the Lion King coming to Paris as that land? Are you saying there are doubts that will be presented at D23? No, I don't think there's. I think I truly do think the Lion King is locked in and ready to go. My doubts are the announcement this D23, just because... I don't, you know, I don't think they don't it. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't, and that's mostly because, correct me if I'm wrong, but DLP never gets big announcements during D23, so it would be a, a change of narrative for once. So Not, my not just that, they're, they're trying to sell holidays on the back of yeah. Frozen opening in 2025, 2026. So there's yeah. there's no way they're announcing a land that isn't opening till twenty twenty nine at the absolute earliest to kill sales yeah. that they're counting on for the frozen land. No chance. So are, would you think they they would start construction before announcing it or? Yes, I, I think so. So I I think they gave us that heads up. And if you remember, we got that that picture that was the Marvel universe, and then we had Galaxy's mm-hmm. Edge or. Paris's Edge or whatever it was, and then we had, then we had um, the Frozen Land, and I think yeah. that the Frozen Land was the one that they went most on. So the Avenger Campus was the first sort of lead-in, and then they went mm-hmm. heavy on Frozen. And I think that Frozen is how they're going to sell holidays to, you know, mothers, fathers, and little kids for the next couple oh, of yeah, years. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suggesting that. Oh well, you'd be better delaying your holiday because the Lion King's coming as well a couple of years later. I don't think they're that dumb. I don't think Frozen will be open. They'll ad- be advertising that. They're, the people who are building Frozen and the expansion will quickly move across to the third land, which is you know the Lion King, and then they'll quietly announce it on the sort of fan channels. They they don't want that going big, you know. Yeah, that that's really not. Happen. Um, the, the, the only thing that gets in the way of for me of that uh, theory is that you know they announced everything at once uh, with the, the Avengers Campus, Star Wars, The Lake, and Frozen, and they said from the beginning it would be a phased opening, so it, it, one would open and then two years later the other, and then two years later the other. So wouldn't that kind of you know have the same effect as announcing the lion king land uh, at this d23 
Well, you could argue that, but there's currently nobody in the LP, so you could argue that has happened. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. You've got, or you've got. I mean, I, I don't know. It's maybe just because I'm not that terribly excited about the Lion King either. Um, oh. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, if you were, if you were honestly, we're gonna, if you were gonna offer me Grogu's pod coaster across on Discovery's <laughs> Edge. I mean, that that sort of stuff wakes me up. I'm like, yeah, that that's what I want to go on Grogu's pod coaster in Discovery's <laughs> Edge. Like that that sounds cool. That really is cool to uh, me. But- you know, like, oh, we've got Splash. I, I mean, I, the, th- the thing is, you're all going to regret it. The minute you have to go to Paris in cold temperatures and go on a water ride, you're going to regret it. I'm, I'm telling you I'll now. just go in the summer. Just go in the summer and... Oh, yes, know, that, that's it. We'll, yeah. all, we'll all just go the two months it's warm. <laughs> hey, look, exactly. First thing. Exactly. Don't you want to see yeah. an elephant graveyard, sir? I do. No, I, w- I, want, I want to see <laughs> a great big crashed... Star Cruiser in Grogu <laughs> with a coaster going through it. That's what I want to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, the thing um, about water rides in the winter is that people still ride them. Just look at uh, Tokyo Disneyland. They have a splash mountain there and they went when it was somewhat cold for me at least, like 10 degrees mm-hmm. or something like that. And they got yeah. soaked because they had the sprinklers turned on. But yeah, you can go to you can go, you can go to Valhalla and Blackpool Pleasure Beach and get soaked any day of the year. They spent eight million pound on the ride, but there's still nobody in the queue. <laughs> uh, nobody, there's really. nobody at Blackpool, sir. Nobody goes there anymore. <laughs> Out of the four million people that go to Blackpool, I, I hasten to add, I doubt there are many people that go on the water rides in Blackpool, especially because it's very cold. Um, some of the comments we've got here um, from Jojo Tom uh, Fitzgerald did tease it. Um, on why did they not announce on April 12th instead of waiting for D23. It is a good thing. This is a joke we have here, but they quite literally announced Walt Disney Studios expansion, Walt Disney Studios 2. Disneyland Paris announced that on a random Tuesday afternoon at about um, (laughs) what would have been 5pm for them. Literally, as they were leaving the office, they decided... This is when well, we're going to announce uh, our. Let's just let's just put this little article out there, you know. Let the yeah, people and it was the people do their thing. <laughs> yeah, it was it was quite literally an article, and we're going to do the largest expansion we've ever done. We're going to spend more money than we've ever spent, and by the way, we've chucked it out at five p.m. You know, <laughs> here you go, enjoy it. Don't bother us. Like <laughs> it was one of the, it was one of the yeah. oddest things that have ever happened in Disney history. However, that's just how Disneyland <laughs> Paris roll. Um, the the Walt Disney, um, sorry, the Disney Village expansion just comes out every now and again. They they release a random bit of artwork that occasionally leaks another bit of artwork that they <laughs> probably didn't think about. Like we didn't even know we knew the Disney, not the World of Disney store, but the other Disney store was getting a refurb. However, we didn't know the name of it, and then randomly, as they were telling Disney us about Wonder. the sports bar, yeah, yeah, literally as they were telling us about the sports bar, we learned that it was called the Disney Wonder. By mi- oh, which I'm sure was a total act. That was in the it was other a total... concept art. You could see the yeah, name. But... Very small. Yeah, but, but, it... you could see it. but they haven't announced it. Nowhere did they announce it. Probably because <laughs> it's just... not worth announcing. <laughs> we have this a... sort of... Everything is worth announcing when it comes to DLP. They announce the every cookie and stuff coming, so, you know. Yeah. But they, like don't, they, they don't. Uh, they don't. They don't want to get fans angry about uh, Disney store closing. We got about three press releases on the Royal Pub that they don't even own. Exactly. I mean, just random things get flung out there. Like, haha! Look at all this. Gr-. I mean, we've we've had. I kid you not. They they once wrapped one of the Disney shuttle buses in a green like, um, what was it? What's the National Geographic branding? Rap- yeah, yeah. They they put on like a plastic wrap around a bus and then sent us a all livery. like a press release. Yeah, livery. It wasn't even a livery. It wasn't. It wasn't even designed well. It was just here <laughs> is here is National Geographic and here it is. And they just sort of flung it out at us as this great big long press release about how amazing they were with this daft bus. And then they build like the car park solar farm and never mentioned it until half it was built. So yeah, exactly. I, Disneyland Paris comms occasionally just forget to mention things um they've also 
I don't think that Jojo is also saying the marketing strategy is probably too early to come out for the Lion King, which probably makes sense. And then Benji Nation also says Lion King can only exist because there is another project with Star Wars. Disneyland Paris can't pass on Star Wars. Yeah, I don't think it can. I, I, I don't think mm-hmm. they've just... I think it probably just makes more sense. Now, I'm going to be really controversial, annoy everybody again, but I don't think the Earth to the Moon is mm-hmm. ever coming back. I'm pretty sure you're stuck with hyperspace nonsense. Mm. And you're going to be stuck with that until yeah. there's significant Star Wars coasters or there's a significant Star Wars presence that allows them to then bring back the moon. Because, quite yeah. frankly, and if you go there, right, if you go there and you're not a Disneyland Paris fan, if you're not in the bubble of Disneyland Paris fans, nobody has a clue what you're on about. Oh, yeah. But there, are, there are people that are like, I want to go on the Star Wars coaster. Yeah. That that's just you know, fundamentally that is true. People want to go to the Star Wars coaster now. If they build a second Star Wars coaster, I could maybe see them bringing back the moon. However, people want to go and people like that. I mean, look at all the effects that currently don't work on Space Mountain that are basically ignored because yeah, yeah. when you go, because you get that music. Star Wars. Da, 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 yeah, you works. know, you get that as you accelerate. So. I mean, they've found that that little song is enough to make people completely forget the ride is terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I don't think we'll have to wait that long, personally, um, because uh, you know the the Star Wars theme in Space Mountain. Um, what what does it generate? It, it does generate some hype because it's a Star Wars coaster and stuff. But I mean, at the end of the day, they don't sell more merch because of it. You know, there's no big Star Wars shop at the end. There's the the, the little photo pass uh, kiosk. The big, the the only big uh, kind of shop that sells have, Star Wars merch is at the end of Star Tours. I have um, a new prediction. Oh yeah, go ahead. The current works they're doing at the back of Space Hyperspace Mountain is them building you a gift shop for your Star Wars merch when you come off. Hmm. Okay. That's a joke. <laughs> but, they, but, but there's probably someone in Paris quickly scribbling down build a shop at the exit <laughs> build a shop at the exit please we need to sell more more Grogu how many fo- how many photos of how many photos have we sold none right quickly get Grogu up on that get a Grogu <laughs> up and stop selling photos can you photoshop like... Grogu into the photo hurry up <laughs> yeah I mean that would probably so, sell more than than anything. What else then? What else have you got coming? Um. So I mean, I, I honestly don't think we're gonna hear much more about DLP um, in the in the parks presentation. Um, so obviously, just just uh, finishing up on Space Mountain, the works there are being quite extensive. You know, we've seen them putting the themed. Uh, what do they call it? The the, the, the themed kind of um, construction walls, you know, not construction walls, but the the gift the, the wrapper around the construction walls. So the scrims. Um, exactly. So thank you. So we're, we're that's gonna stay there for a while, I think, and we're we're gonna see um, the um, the dome. Better than we've ever seen it. Completely redone with a new lighting package. I think it's going to look great. And then when you enter inside and it's the same old Star Wars hyperspace mountain with more than half the effects not working or no audio on your on your train. It's just, it just makes me sad. But uh, I mean, that's... But you can get Grogu now photoshopped onto your picture. Well, that would <gasps> probably make me happier. Uh, but uh, until until then, it's just it's just uh, a big no <laughs> for me. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm somewhat convinced. I'm somewhat convinced the Star Wars overlay is staying for a significant period of time. I I don't. People seem to be amazed that this bring back the moon things happening. If it happens, I'll be very impressed. But I don't mm-hmm. think it's going to happen until you've got Grogu's pod coaster up in the background and throwing people upside down. I don't just okay. don't see it. If you were okay. to ask Disney off now, would you like the Jules Verne theme? Or would you rather have in the steampunk sort of vision of the land? Or would you rather have, if you asked Disney genuinely, or would you have rather done it in Galaxy's Edge style in the, the Star Wars land? Yeah. Hmm. There wouldn't even be a question, would there? Yeah. 
Yeah, no. Disney Disney off to D. Disney off to D does not do statement pieces like that. They do yep. quite literally IP IP IP. Mm-hmm. So exactly the single IP land. Yes, single IP, IP land. land yeah. that exactly. We like single IP lands. We like a lot of single IP lands. Okay. Any other? Yeah, like Co- do you have any con- land, which it doesn't have anything. <laughs> do you have any controversial takes on what you think we might get from um, D twenty three? Um, um, you know, I think we're probably gonna have some kind of announcement uh, that we're not expecting. Uh, probably not regarding DLP, okay, so let's just say that. Probably <laughs> regarding the American parks, um, because that's where yes. the money is and the people on, in the audience really care about. Um, I don't think we'll hear about Tokyo, just because that's not owned by Disney. Um, but if you if you want to go, we can go quickly go to to the Asian parks because uh, you know both Hong Kong and Shanghai should have some kind of Avengers or Marvel themed expansions coming. Um, you know, with Hong Kong being a clone of arrive there supposedly a building in Anaheim that's been in, in the, you know, in in the back of their minds for... For decades. For decades, yeah. Uh, each E23, we get a new concept, and uh, that's basically it. Hopefully, we'll learn more about that this time. I'm Maybe sure. they'll change it for the fourth time. Now it's not about yeah, exactly. the Fantastic Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, we'll see about that. And then in, in Orlando, I, you know... I think we'll see a lot of a lot of news regarding the parks there, especially when it comes to the tropical Americas. So stuff that's already been announced, but we don't know for sure what's happening. So the tropical yeah. Americas, the the behind Big Thunder uh, stuff, and the um, um, the beyond Big Thunder stuff, not behind Big Thunder stuff, uh, and then possibly something at Hollywood Studios. I think. They should definitely work something out with the old uh, production courtyard. That 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 whole location is completely abandoned. It looks awful. Um, completely, and, because they have offices behind there as well, where yeah, there yeah, used they to have, be the animation studios. Exactly, they, they do have offices, but from the theme park side, it's completely abandoned, and they should definitely work something out there. Um, but yeah, I really don't know what to expect. You know, I made all my predictions on my prediction video, and I think that uh, turned out well, I guess. But when it comes to things I'm really sure about, I really have no idea. Especially now they've said they're not live streaming anything. So we haven't talked yeah. about that, I think. We talked about it in the, in the well, pre podcast. Well, so we, let's, do a quick, let's do a quick wrap up here. Yep. Just ahead, before yeah, we move yeah. on to that, um, Benji Nation says yeah, Star Wars yeah. is very is very popular. Billion movie, it's a billion dollar movie franchise, especially in Europe. It is UK and Germany. Um, let's sell lots of Galaxy's Edge merchandise without um, Galaxy's Edge. I'm pretty sure they already do that because, as again, he I points out later on, yeah. they already did it for Mickey's Runaway Railway. Um, yeah, exactly. Jojo says, a Star Wars ride in a gorgeous steampunk pioneering building is what we all want. Bring back the moon. Yep. Um, Benji Nation again goes to say, what if we could basically do a trade? The Star Wars coaster in the back in exchange for the new steampunk version of Space Mountain, which would be wonderful. Um, <laughs> Jojo's asking for an update on Tokyo's Space Mountain project from D23 and a debrief on Fantasy Springs. Will likely be in the presentation, which is probably true, actually. Yeah, that's something. Followed by Benjamin. That's what what they... I haven't seen people talking about. That's a, that's an interesting question because would they showcase Fantasy Springs as this amazing thing they will never build in their theme parks? They do. Looks... They did the last time. They showcased but... the ride vehicles. But yeah, but that, that was the ride vehicles the and stuff. But like, look at this two billion dollar expansion that Tokyo Disney see made on uh, what well, had and now let's just go over to our smaller lands and re-themes and stuff it just <laughs> it just doesn't sound like the, something imagine that... 
if they showcase Fantasy Springs and right after that they showcase the clone of Cars Land they are putting yeah, exactly. beyond the Nintendo. Yeah, exactly. I quite, so like, I quite like Cars Land, so I'm not be insulting that. <laughs> I like it, but it's, it's going to be a smaller version, just the ride. But Benji Nation yeah, then says fair. Hong Kong Disneyland will probably have the Marvel expansion, and Shanghai will likely get the Avatar expansion. Um, yeah, nobody's talking. Why is Shanghai. nobody. There's nobody excited about a potential Cars Route 66 expansion across the globe. Why is nobody demanding that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, because the original Cars Land was such a genius land to brought you into the movie. But if they do just the ride, kind of makes it feel mediocre at best because the ride is good. But uh, I heard it lots of people when you enter the land. I heard lots of people when you enter the land. Lots of people in California have been desperate to get their own version of Cars Route sixty six. They've heard about the prison version. Cars road everybody's, trip. Yeah, everybody's really excited. Yeah, road trip or whatever it's called. I think Everybody... if they don't do Radiator Springs, they should no, do no, like we the Wheel that. Hotel. They will just do you up... know the Wheel Hotel? We should just put up a picture. <laughs> um... The world's yeah. largest lug nut, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, now we're talking. That's be that's what's beyond Big Thunder Mountain, the largest, the world's largest lug nut. Come on, how how's that not exciting? <laughs> Listen, what the magic King, what the Magic Kingdom actually needs is beyond Thunder Mountain. It needs an additional bus park where you can get on the bus, the tram, or the boat and get <laughs> yeah. to the car park out the other end. Yeah, exactly. like that, that's actually what it needs. Um, like I said, you get on Cars Road Trip and it takes you all the way to the parking lot. That's what it actually needs. <laughs> um, <laughs> So Cars Road so, Trip is obviously the best thing Walt Disney Imagineering ever produced. Yeah, so before so, we move on yeah, to the last yeah, topic, let, let, me just, WD... let me just end with this. Uh, if they built a Cars Road Trip in America, would what would replace the iFuel Tower? Would it be like the... Um, what monument would... You, would no, um... They could make it to Texas, because Texas has an Eiffel Tower with a big hat on top. Really? I did not know that. Yes, they do. Okay. It's in Paris, <laughs> Texas. So okay. Look it up. <laughs> I will, I will. One thing that I haven't seen people talking about is that <laughs> Shanghai does have space to accommodate another hotel. They can accommodate two mm -hmm. more, three more, because they can do another value hotel. They could yep. do one right next to the park. And then they have a lot one. They have a lot of space to expand in Shanghai. So Tokyo, the not the Tokyo, the Toy Story Maybe Hotel. Maybe Blue Sky. Yeah, a lot of... Maybe will we Blue hear... Sky another park. Yeah. Do you think we will hear a lot of Blue Sky ideas at this D23? Or uh, will it be more concrete information? Because I don't think... Oh, they, they are not going to call it enjoy. Blue Sky, but we'll have it. They are not yeah. going to call yeah, it they Blue might, Sky. They might rename it, wouldn't it be good if... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What new if? Series, what yeah, if? Yeah, it's, it's a new series of what if. What if we built these? Yeah. <laughs> what if? Yeah. It's a what if yeah, I heard that from Scott Gusty. He went on a podcast and he talked. Yeah, it's about. It's a guarantee, basically. So, yeah. that here, you'll get the blue sky. Let, let, mm -hmm. Let's quickly talk about. Um, let's quickly talk about the bad news that we've learned just now, which is that the Disney live stream is not happening, so the parks segment is not being live-streamed. In fact, I don't think any it's been live-streamed, but the parks segment is not being live-streamed. And secondly, yeah. they've put out the rules that everyone will ignore. Um, and basically, you know, you should not you should not attend. The, no, no, you shouldn't attend, sorry. You shouldn't attend if you're trying to record it. Then you shouldn't record it, and you shouldn't try and upload yeah. it. You're, you're there to listen. You're not there to attend to really information. That's basically yep. the guidance they've sent out. So, they've said they don't want us, oh. people like us, recording it, and they're not going to live stream it. So, what does that tell us about their ideas? Um, I think it... I, I mean, I, I really don't know what to think, actually. Uh, because, in a way, when was the first uh, live-streamed... Uh, parks panel was it in 2019? No, I didn't. No, the next one. No, so we it only was in... did it uh, post COVID. Oh, 
So post COVID, so we're we're kind of going back to norm, you know, and back to the the golden days of DJD three, where they had a lot of expansion and announcements. So, in a way, I I I don't know what to think because I I'd say one of the major key things they have they they thought about with it. Um, not being live streamed is the exclusivity of, you know, being able to watch it live. So they're creating yeah, value never... for the people that they're that they're there. You know? it's, wor- it's worth noting their fiduciary, fiduciary duty is that if they're going to spend significant amounts of money or anything that alters the trajectory of the company, it has to be announced. And arguably, they've already done it by saying they're spending sixty billion. It has to be announced to the financial markets on a public forum um, mm. at the same time so people can react. So they can do that in multiple ways. They can do it either by live streaming, they can do it by sending out a press release immediately, um, they can do it on the blog, they can do that. The only thing I've got on this is if Apple was releasing a new phone, Apple does a live stream because it wants everybody to hear from them exactly or they want uh, to hear the yeah. message directly they want people to see it as they want to announce it the problem you've got is if you are doing a large expansion and you want people to come to your fantastic new park and you want to show them that here we've got the Walt Disney World fifth gate do you really want that done through a couple of thousand bloggers making their own spin on it or well, would you rather just send they- it out yourself well, they've said they're going to be live um, uploading every Screen. everything. Broadcast. Uh, not, not live broadcasting, but uploading the articles on Disney uh, Parks blog. So in they're a way, exciting, it's going to be it's going to be live and they're going to share the concepts and the information. Now, why they won't live streaming live stream it, it I don't know. But as you said, if, if Apple was releasing a new phone and they do every year, they live stream it so the everyone can watch it at the same time and it's kind of a big thing. Everyone watching it reacting at the same time. So I don't know why they would choose not to live stream it. Um does it mean it's bad news and they don't have anything to talk about and it's gonna be a garbage show? I don't think so. Um but I think um, they're worried I, I think... streaming the past. So it's not a bad precedent. It's just weird. I think they're I think they're worried as well about things like Epic Universe. I mean we, we spoke about this before the podcast came on and that's why we started the podcast because we were talking about things that were podcast worthy. But you're now yeah. in the territory where it doesn't really matter what Disney announces. Announcing a new land here or you know announcing one little new land here or this expansion there, we might update this ride here, is nowhere near as exciting as here's a whole new damn damn park with five lands and here's a here's a drone style run through them and here's creative directors telling you about the individual lands and that's just terribly exciting and I, I think they're mm-hmm. worried that they, ha- they don't have anything as big as that to announce and you know We've got we've got Benjamination there saying Disney still has the secret communication that doesn't work anymore. Epic Universe is the complete opposite and it works well. I fully agree. We're now a YouTube yep. and a TikTok and we're an engaged you know, the, the fans are on social media wanting that video content, they want live streams, that's how people get things. Mm-hmm. And now no, Disney and is struggling the, to communicate. Yeah, the communication strategy behind Epic Universe is it, it's it's being completely so amazingly well thought of and it's working very well because you know they took their sweet sweet time until they began talking about it the the the, the i mean the park is com- near completion now and they've only started releasing those videos and information this year so in a way people are receiving all the, that information in just knowing that the the park will be open next year creates so much hype around it so that strategy will definitely work amazingly for them. And I think Disney really needs to, you know, learn from Epic Universe, but also, you know, kind of just expand and make their communication better because it's just awful, especially in DLP. We're not going to go into DLP's communication. That's a, a complete 
um, another topic altogether because it's well, awful. They, ju- they, ju- they just get bored and someone sort of throws it all out on a Tuesday well, afternoon. Exa- but... Exactly, that, <laughs> that's it. That's it. We, we have Epic Universe with these amazing videos with models that cost, I think it was $2 million to build that huge model in the Epic Universe preview center. They have, I mean, they have a pre- the preview center. They have Steven Spielberg talking about it, uh, about it, the new theme. Yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing. And we compare that to Disney, and it, they won't even live stream their their, their their live event. It just doesn't make any Must sense. Must be nice being Spielberg, right? You do absolutely nothing, and you get paid tons of money for being a creative lead. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Spielberg's creative. creative. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, it's just, just wild. I mean, but Disney can do it. I mean, did it? I don't know if any of you ever seen. Did you see the Epcot transformation project? So they were going. They they had yeah, the Epcot. Yeah, that's a disaster. No, but it looked good. No, it did. Yeah. And the the preview center in the in the park as well. It looked amazing. But uh, I mean, more than half the projects were cancelled. So they yeah. I mean, it didn't end just... up being what they had they had said it was going to yeah, be. Exactly. But the preview center in the park was cool. It was just it was so energetic and ambitious and you know it had lasers and it had projections and it transformed yeah. and it danced and it showed you firework shows and mm-hmm. it was just cool so disney can do it if they tried to do it they just have sort of given it up and been like oh we'll be busy anyway don't worry about it yeah, so exactly. you know there is going to be a model right because Braden said that the model was being built right now for this plane yeah Brayden from Mickey Views has said they're working on the models for the expansion projects they announced it, they announced now. So we're going to see the models, uh, well, not we, but the attendees will see the models up close, probably after the parks panel uh, on the 11th, uh, so on yeah. Sunday. Um, so, I mean, they they have their ways of doing stuff that... Compared to the well, competition, even even that they're, they're lacking. I reckon we will be doing a podcast very shortly after. <laughs> yeah, regard, so regarding can... that, I, I won't get any yeah, sleep. 5 a.m. The, yeah. Depending on what they announce, uh, it, so my sleep will depend on what they announce, basically. If they announce the Lion King and a ton of DLP stuff, which I'm not really uh, expecting that much... I probably won't sleep because I have videos to upload and and uh, bills to pay to pay. So, you know. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely do a I podcast will, if, they, will, if if they come up with something big. I I will be in my bed and I'll wake up and discuss it with you all on Discord once she's already told me if it's a good or a bad thing. So <laughs> exactly. Jojo Jojo's um Jojo's put an interesting comment there just before we finish. And I know we're trying to wrap yeah. up here, but Disney Plus views. Uh, fuel what WDI does. While Walt built a park in 55 with a castle inspired by a movie that only came out in 57, using the park as a marketing tool for Sleeping Beauty, something like that is just unthinkable today. And that was something we also said earlier, was that given that they have Disney Plus and they can go live and they can live stream and stuff, it, it, it's odd that they've chosen not to put the Disney Park yeah. stuff for that, that synergy that mm-hmm. Mr. Chapek was screeching about for years. <laughs> um, you know why however, they didn't do that? Because it makes too much sense. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Sense is out. However, it is a very exciting time to be a Disney fan this week. We um, will bring you a podcast sometime next week. Um, Bernardo is going to bring you a video. I can promise you that because it's what he does. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're now over an hour, so we're going we're gonna to wrap this up now. Um, you have been listening to the Disney Discord podcast. Um, this is a podcast that is live. So this isn't just some people sitting in a room recording a podcast. This is completely online on our Discord channel where we interact with lots of people in the chat and anybody like WDW Central who's been a very nice Yay! guest for us this evening. Thank, Thank you, you for much. joining us. I'm very um, thankful for being part of this illustrious panel. <laughs> and, I hope, and I hope that the, the next panel, now that we've broken the ceiling and we've got our first guest on, Hopefully more people will join us because hopefully we can get up to about 20 of us in the room at some point and we can oh, make well. the podcast 10 hours long. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. And if you don't already join us on the false hope that you want to join our Discord, please check the description in the video that you're watching this on or in the description of the audio podcast that I send out but I'm not sure anybody listens to. Thank you Ouch. and goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.